Hey everyone, welcome back to Rally Caps. It's a podcast for artists, entrepreneurs, and everybody in between. I'm Steven. And I'm Eric. And today we have a very fun conversation with Eric over here. Hi. We're talking about a really cool trip that he went on back in March with one of his brand sponsors for his running YouTube channel, which we'll give more context for in just a second. But before we get into that conversation, I just want to bring your eyes over here if you're watching this on YouTube to this movie poster we have back here. It is Monday, the date that this episode's going out. I think it's the 15th of April. Yep. Uh, the premiere for our, the Chicago premiere for our documentary, Moving Still, is this coming Saturday, which is super exciting. It's April 20th, Saturday, 7 p.m. at the Davis Theater. There are probably still tickets available. Yeah. We're recording this in the past, obviously, so we don't know what it's like the day that you're listening to this, but... If there are tickets still available, please check out the description below. There's an Eventbrite link there where you can purchase tickets. Uh, and if you're unable to attend, maybe pass it along to someone that you know in Chicago yeah. who would like to come instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking right now. We have over 200 people that are going to be in the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to get it up to about 250. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a few dozen tickets left. Yep. Uh, there is an after party option as well. There might be a few more mm -hmm. tickets for that. It's just a way to support the production of the film, um, since we uh, used our resources to produce this film. It wasn't sponsored by anything else. We're mm -hmm. just doing our best to recoup in these premieres. So if you've been wanting to support in any way, this could be a really good way. This could be a really good thing for this you. Could be <laughs> <laughs> yes. Support us in that way so that we can <laughs> break even on making a movie. <laughs> Yes. So if there are still tickets available for the Saturday, April 20th, Chicago premiere of Moving Still, check the link in the YouTube description or Spotify, Apple Podcast, show notes everywhere. Go check it out. 420. 420. You were avoiding it like the plague. I, dude, every, we've, I think we've both been doing this. Every time we've texted the date to people, April. Hey, it's Saturday, April 20th. They're like, isn't that 420? We're like, it's Maybe. Saturday, April 20th. The month? <laughs> Is denoted with a four. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Saturday, April 20th. Yes. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Very excited for the premiere. It's going to be a super fun evening. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, more information to come on a potential photo walk or some kind of daytime event as well. Yeah. If you're unable to attend but want to hang out with the crew, with Joe, with everyone who's involved, um, we'll be keeping that kind of informed and figured out as we get it figured yeah. out through social channels. If you want to watch my kids that day, let me know. No. No. One of our listeners could do that. No. Nope. No. Nope. Maybe not. <laughs> Chad, can you just edit that out? I'm pretending Chad's over there, even though he's right here. <laughs> okay, cool. So back to what we said. Hey, in wait, the, Steven. What, what? I have allergies. That's <laughs> so we're just gonna put that we're just gonna put that out in the open. So this is you hear <laughs> disgusting sounds in the microphone. I'm so sorry. Or you're just gonna hear me sound like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and my voice is cracked like a 15 year old. A little sniffling ASMR for you, for you Claritin folks out there. Did we? Uh, oh god! Oh, that's like no. made me want to sneeze. I'm probably gonna have sneezing fits throughout. Well, I mean, this yeah, getting your nose this close to this kind of material. I don't know oh, if people no. can hear that. That's, I need yeah, <clears throat> I need to go get some Claritin. I this, think I have some in my backpack. This, do you want to go get some? We you, as, it won't it won't be ready by the time. Yeah, gotcha. It just hit me once I got up here. I was like, great, 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 cool, great, cool, cool, cool. cool. So Itchy we have, eyes, we have, runny nose. I might be all the uh, allergy flowers that I put in here. What makes you allergic? <laughs> Pollen. <laughs> Pollen. Yeah, <laughs> allergy flowers. <laughs> I've heard I've heard that Sab Sabria saw something written that a lot of the trees <clears throat> in the states, uh, like there's two there's two different kinds of tree. I don't apple know. trees and oak trees. No, yeah, but ones Those that are the carry only trees. <laughs> ones that carry far more pollen that are cheaper. Oh, oh. than uh. More, the more expensive one that doesn't carry as much pollen, and there's far more of those in the states than like Europe. Hang on. And that's why allergies are so much worse here. This is, this is. I don't know if that's the truth. So you're saying there's two type, two types of trees in the states. I guess I think two types, two types of trees in the Did world, and those those class in that classification, like to, like yeah, allergy trees. Well, yeah, to to purchase. I don't know. To, don't ask me. Okay. I don't I'll want ask. this to turn into big trees con conspiracy. I, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, trees. Dude, West Coast. Big tree conspiracy. <laughs> you seen the trees over there? Big. You seen the pollen they go off? Those oh trees aren't God, real, dude. dude. Trees aren't real. Trees aren't real. They're just government agents. 
just like birds. <laughs> we need to talk about this more off mic later because I'm very curious now. I've truly never experienced um, allergies to that severity before. Man, so good for you. Yeah, it uh, doesn't seem fun. Gene, Gene was pretty horrible. Hit hard by it yesterday. He seemed. It's getting worse, and in the peak <clears throat> of it, I am so miserable. That sucks. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not fun knowing I'm running a marathon in four days. Yeah, let's talk about that. Actually, let's do that. Yeah. So, but before we even talk about the specific trip that I referenced in the intro, mm -hmm. we're recording this on April 11th, mm -hmm. uh, four days before the Boston Marathon. Yes, Marathon Monday. As you're listening to this. I oh, might be yes. running the marathon. You're probably, yeah. What what uh, time do you start on Monday? I start at 10 Eastern. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Literally, people will be listening to this as you're running. Yeah. So, if you want to track me, you go to the Boston Marathon. Do you app. Know your, what's your bib number? Do you uh, know? 1073. 1073. Okay. 1073. 1073. And that's a separate, like the Chicago Marathon has its own app and everything. Yeah. Boston, cool. Mar Boston Marathon app. Very nice. You can track my race. Very sick. Should be finishing around, hopefully, 1235. 1235. Okay. Eastern. Eastern. Sick. Yep. Very cool. Hmm? That's nice. Yeah. You excited? Very. Good. The, the weather's been so up and down, so I've just been checking it every day, and yeah. my emotions are very high and very low. I'm <laughs> They're both. There are peaks and valleys. Yesterday you, was very low. Today's very high again. There's got to be some blanket excitement for the fact that you're just running the Boston Marathon yes. for the first time ever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, especially in the circumstance I'm in now and the amount of people that are going to be there and the people I will be able to meet finally in real life. Yep. And, oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be an insane weekend. Yeah, Especially sure. screening our movie, yeah. too, yeah. That's also happening, too, yeah. which is it's kind of an insane addition to the weekend. There's another... Friday evening. Yeah, screening the movie gallery. still. That's, I keep forgetting. Yeah, <laughs> those tickets sold out like two hours. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be really fun. Sick. Is there anyone that you know of through the internet yeah. that you're going to meet in person for the first time this coming weekend. Yes. Cool. Yes. Multiple. Cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's going to be very fun. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Are those people going to be at the premiere tomorrow night? No. Okay. I think ev by the time I shared the link with people, they were gone. Yeah. I mean, it, so. it, yeah, it was very fast. Yeah. It's, I forgot it was happening that day. Yeah. And then I, I was doing something. I opened up Instagram. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, that's it. Oh, <laughs> Bye. Uh, buy tickets. <laughs> yeah. I think the, was it the Leica Boston Instagram page were the yeah. ones that announced it? Yeah. And I yeah. think they sent it to their email list too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. That's goodbye. That's very quick. Um, yeah. Very cool. Okay. Awesome. That all funnels into mm -hmm. the main topic of conversation today, which yeah. is a really cool week long kind of retreat style trip that you went on in March. Yes. With BPN, which yeah. is Bear Performance Nutrition. Yes. For a little bit of context, for those who are not familiar with <laughs> BPN, <Yeah. laughs> um, for those who are not familiar with BPN, Bear Performance Nutrition, founded in 2012 mm -hmm. by Nick Bear mm -hmm. of the same name, he has gone on to create a thriving business in the supplement industry and also as a personality and coach to a certain degree on YouTube through all of his social platforms. Um, incredibly inspirational guy. He is actually the reason that I started taking strength training seriously in college. He's like the catalyst. And the reason I liked his YouTube channel at the time was because he went to the effort of using nice cameras to make all of his videos with. I thought that's, that's really cool that he's actually A, jacked and B, caring about the visual quality of mm -hmm. his videos. So that was what kind of hooked me to begin with. He's been a, a kind of from afar guide in the strength training sense. Um, and I think it's especially cool now that he has founded this kind of like this interesting in between the hybrid athlete model. Mm -hmm. And he represents the two forms of training that you and I each like, yeah. which is running and strength training. Yeah. It's like the perfect intersection. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. well represented. It stands between us. Yeah. Don't he, know if we'll ever go into his intersection of the Venn diagram. Yeah. No. We, yeah. It's kind of like he's, he's over there and we're like waving to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Good work, I man. just mean in the sense that you're <laughs> never going to cross into hybrid in running. Oh, yes. And I'm probably never going to cross into hybrid in strength. Probably. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was like, this is, this is the guy. He, yeah. He's perfect for both of us. Mm. Yeah. I definitely look just like him. So. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely, same. dude, totally the same. They d- BPM <laughs> did me dirty because we raced uh, CIM together, and they snapped a photo where he was. I mean, even positionally, he was t- closer to the camera, and I was further away, and it just makes me look like the scrawniest little rat. They didn't they, in existence. Didn't they go on to use that photo on the oh, yeah. banner of the homepage uh-huh. for a little bit? Uh-huh. Yeah, and running ads. Oh yeah. You like turned your laptop to me one day. You're like, how dare they? <laughs> Everyone's it's, like, he's got boulder shoulders, well, and look at you. It's I'm even like, worse because there's depth involved, too, and no one's, they're just like, oh, well, he's so much bigger. It's like, well, yes, and, but yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> just seeing Nick on the course relative to what a traditional runner looks like. It's insane. It's, it was pretty wild. <laughs> as fast as he's moving, dude ran a 239 marathon that day, which is, which is, it's just absurd for his size. Yes. Yeah. We, I forgot, we, I it would be so interesting to actually find statistics on this, but you had mentioned you're like that's yeah. probably one of the fastest mare times for his weight class. Yes, ever. Yeah, and they don't do any kind of data classifications based on weight class and yeah. running. So it, it literally might be the fastest marathon time over 195 pounds. Yeah, I've never seen someone of that size who can lift that much move, move that quickly. Yeah, that insane. just doesn't happen. There isn't much of that intersection truly yeah. outside of CrossFit and. Cool enough, like him and I have a very similar running story Mm -hmm. as far as progression goes. So seeing him build into that speed over the course of five years long time was uh, is cool to witness as well because that's when I jumped into watching next stuff because I wasn't really interested in any of the lifting stuff. But yeah, my buddy Chris yesterday was telling me he's like, it's so profound that he really changed the model of his business because mm-hmm. of his love for running, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, and now BPN's really thriving in the endurance space. Oh, yeah. Be really making a name uh, for themselves. Uh, and I want to say ourselves. Like, I feel very much yeah. a part of the team at this point. And you literally are. Yeah. And and that's that brings us to yeah. the Athlete Week that yeah. you're a part of. So, again, that's the context. Nick, BPN, all of that jazz, if you're unfamiliar with any of that world. So moving into this week that you spent, it was a BPN athlete week. Mm-hmm. This is back in March. And I mean, take the wheel. What what happened? How was it? I I had no idea what to expect. They said there was going to be an athlete week. So I signed with BPN in December. Mm-hmm. Um, so signed a contract for, for six months. I kind of did it just being like, okay, let me test the waters and see what a sponsorship like this look looks like. Mm-hmm. And a whole... With that, a whole mess of imposter syndrome because mm. traditionally a sponsored athlete is someone who's elite. Mm-hmm. And so for me to reckon with the fact that I'm very much not elite mm-hmm. and definitely signing this contract because I'm a running influencer, mm-hmm. like, let's be real, like, that's what it is. And that's by way of your running YouTube channel. Running YouTube channel. Yes. And now Instagram too, like, that's mm-hmm. definitely growing as well. But... Like I never intended to become a running influencer, and I still really struggle with titling it that because it's very much just using my filmmaking to tell my story in running. Mm-hmm. But signed that contract and immediately ran CIM. It was like right after I signed the contract to become a BPN athlete. Oh, okay, yeah. And so got to experience the team and the camaraderie and was like, wow, this is actually very special yeah went to the bpn shakeout run which there were like literally over a thousand people at the shakeout run running the streets of sacramento which i feel like is a testament to the character behind the brand that nick has built with bpn it's nuts yeah not character in the fictional sense like literally like the attitude the the integrity the character in that sense like that that is the kind of pull that they have that's crazy yeah i've I've never seen a shakeout run like that the most i've ever seen a shakeout run is like 250 people. Yeah. Geez. So like to take over the town, like we stopped traffic for <laughs> 10 minutes well, yeah, okay. clearing an area. You're waiting for a thousand people to run by. Yeah. Yeah. So that wasn't athlete week, but so fast forward, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I've been documenting my entire training block to leading up to Boston. Mm-hmm. And so things have been crescendoing through that. And then, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, they invited all the athletes to come to Nashville. Yep. And so they rented a huge Airbnb. And I think there were, I want to say 27, around 25 to 30 okay. athletes that could make it. And so we all, from different disciplines, descended upon Nashville. And then that's where the imposter syndrome just came flooding back again. Because I'm like, 
there are elite athletes on the team. Mm. So that's what's interesting. Uh, okay, so it is a combination. Of, yeah. Okay. And I mean, some of the runners are, are are definitely considered sub sub elite. Sure. Like Brock Kelly is a collegiate athlete. He's a D two track and cross country. Oh, he's in college currently. Yeah, he's he's graduating in a month. Oh dang. Okay. Uh, but he cool. is a D two like on the team track and, and cross country fast fast guy. Word. Uh, and then Mitch Amons, who is uh, the fastest marathoner on the team, qualified for the Olympic trials. Oh. So Whoa. Mitch wasn't there that weekend, okay. but Brock was there. And then you have the suite of power lifters and Annika Greer is a crossfitter. And she's like top three in the world yeah. in her weight class. I didn't realize she was there. She's a huge deal. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> um, and uh, Russ was there and Russ just won the national championship in, uh, in power lifting. He's going to casual. He's going to worlds. He set an unofficial world record at that meet. <laughs> Did he actually? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm walking Wait, into doing what powerlifting. No, like what was his lift that he did during the week? I think it was the combined total of the three in the meet. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. He's okay. an animal. And I think that was his fourth or fifth national title. Wow. And he's going to Latvia, I want to say okay. in June to, to compete at worlds, which he is supposed to win as well in his weight class. So yeah. And then you have like LS McLean, who is, He's much more of like the dad energy like me. He's in his 40s now okay. and he just he's coming back from a bicep injury and it was the first time he lifted in four lifted in 4 or 5 months and he just casually squatted 600 pounds. Yeah, on his first lift back. Yeah. And cool. I'm, we're like <laughs> cool. And he's like getting all emotional cuz and rightfully so. He's like I haven't I haven't squatted in like 5 or 6 months he's and he it, got to do his first one on the trip. He's in his 40s? Yeah. His first lift back after an injury was 600. I'll show you the video. Yeah. So it's incredible. Yeah. So absurd. that's the, that's what I'm walking into yeah, to get context. You're like, cool. Hey, pass me the bar. Hey, I got this. I make videos on <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> okay. That's a follow up question then. Is, is the online presence a common thing amongst every athlete there? Or is it, is it kind of varying? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is the athletes that couldn't make it were the ones that like don't have as much of an online presence because okay. they're more elite. Gotcha. Um, okay. And I think Parker Stinson is technically a BPN athlete now. He's also an elite marathoner. Okay. You have Sally McRae, who is an elite ultra marathoner that is a BPN athlete. She couldn't make it that that week. Um, so I think it's definitely many more of the athletes that that do content and are in like the influencing game for sure were the ones that can make it to this okay. trip and and do that and and it was funny because there were multiple moments where like all of us were holding cameras filming the same exact thing and you know it was it brought me right back to like the the wedding, wedding workshop yeah. stuff yeah. where you're like <laughs> everyone's photographing the same couple the same exact way and I'm like this is like so <laughs> I typically don't film in moments like that um so it was just kind of funny but yeah, it felt so intimidating walking into the room. Thankfully, I knew I had like pr a great relationship with a few people in the room already. Yep. So I, well, okay, <laughs> I get to the Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't met Caitlin Miller yet. She's okay. she's a marathoner as well. Okay. She's a beast. Um, but you knew each other online. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. She and she ran CIM. She ran two fifty three okay. or two fifty two at CIM. Yep. Beast, and. I pull up to Airbnb from my from my Uber, and there's just like a front door at the front of the place, and I hear that everybody's upstairs. Like the windows are open, I hear everyone's upstairs, feeling very nervous, feeling all the imposter syndrome. Yep. I just walk in that lower level door, and I walk in, and Caitlin's right there, and I'm like, "Oh, Caitlin, nice to meet you." Like you know, it's one of those you've seen each other online. Yeah. Like, oh, nice to finally meet you. Yeah. I'm holding my C70 cinema camera okay. in my bags. And I'm just like looking around. I'm like, oh yeah, great to be here. It's one of those like I'm trying to carry a conversation, but I'm like, we're all supposed. To, I heard that everyone's upstairs. Sure. How do I get? <laughs> so I'm like looking for the staircase as I'm like making small talk. I'm like, okay. And I look, and there's like a bedroom over there. And I'm like, okay. So I start walking down the hallway, and I look, and it's just like bedroom, bedroom, bedroom. And she's like, I could hear hesitation in her voice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm like. Do you know where staircase is? And she's like, oh yeah. I think if you want to go upstairs, you have to like go outside and then out to the other one. And I'm like, this is the girls for, isn't it? She's like, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, great first impression. Awesome. I'm just going to set myself yep. uh, down I'm just right going to okay. go ahead yeah. and throw my cinema yeah. camera out the window. We were back it was to not Chicago. Recording, I promise. <laughs> <It's not laughs> I literally went to all the way to the end of a hallway of rooms, got to the last door and saw that it was another bedroom. And I was like, there's no staircase here, is there? And she's like, nope, you have to go outside. You are in the girls' headquarters. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. So that was Caitlin's first impression of me. Super great. Excellent. Uh, so, th yeah, I'm like, okay, awesome. Go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then I, met, I saw Jordan Utter and Tony, who's uh, the athlete rep, and, and, like, all the pals. Got to see Brock for the first time in real life. We'd, oh, that was your first time actually seeing yeah, each other? Yeah, yeah, oh, Okay, so, cool. And, He'll be a guest soon. Yes. Uh, yep. Very excited to have him on Rally Caps. Yeah, but I mean, right immediately, just immediately, everyone was so chill, cool. so down to earth. Uh, all all of the powerlifters, all of the strong people immediately were just like, I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you train for marathons. Okay, I, cool. like, I could never, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, likewise, I, do, I, can't, <laughs> I, don't, I can't even fathom what you do. So there's just this deep seated respect for one another's discipline. Cool. And that was really cool to experience and people just being so approachable in conversation. Yep. And it was, it was no doubt like the, the two adjectives I came up with, with everybody on the weekend was that everybody was so kind. Mm. Everyone was so intelligent. Mm. It makes a lot of sense because if, I mean, these people are building these online brands, like they're not stupid mm. people, like mm. they're really intelligent people. And like, approaching what they do with a lot of intentionality. Yeah. And that was reinforced with the morning runs we went on where mm. everyone got up at 5.30 mm. and we're all in the kitchen that early. Yeah. I've just never experienced that in running. Yeah. It's always been very solo or meeting one friend at that time. And even then it's like people bailing on you the night before. Oh, I can't make it. I'm going to be at this thing. Oh, I can't do it because X, Y, Z. Oh, I can't do it. Maddie went into labor. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very specific your reference. First kid, but yeah. Joe. How, how dare how you? How dare you skip out <laughs> on that run? Uh, but that was so cool because, yeah, it, it just motivated me that much more yeah. to to get out and make that stuff happen mm -hmm. and run together those early mornings. So yeah, all in all, experience was so cool. BPN did an unbelievable job of just like treating us that week yeah. and making us feel really loved and welcomed with gear and a new bag. Like that hat was one of those things, that right? That was one yeah. of the things yep. I got. Yeah, always just like hooking it up with with merch, mm -hmm. full well knowing we're going to wear it all the time because it's so sick. A-Rod and the design team mm -hmm. are just out of their minds talented. Ethan, the the expo integrations they did at, at Austin, Austin Marathon. Oh, I did see that actually. Yeah, that it was, was like a plywood dude, that was like wall an with art graffiti. Installation. It that was insane. sick. Yeah, with like, the gumball dispenser for the go gels too. I was like, that's and yeah. It's a testament to Nick and the leader that he is, because to your <clears throat> point, he's always been someone that cares about the artistic side of all of this. Oh yeah, from and, the beginning. Yeah, and so to build a team that has all those components and mm -hmm. to to do media that is so so high quality mm -hmm. and exciting and mm -hmm. like pushes the edge yep. and Jordan and, and the team doing that. It was also so insane to connect with them on that level. Yeah. Cause Landry, first time I met him, we, you know, connected on the internet. Mm -hmm. It was one of those, like, he's like, what's up, man. And you just, you don't recognize people necessarily right away. And he's like, it's Landry. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. What's up? Dude, profile photos never look yeah, like I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and you're like, Oh, I haven't kept up with all your videos or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And Landry just jumped in on the team and he's sitting there being like, dude, I learned how to color footage from your LUT video a year saying, and a half ago. Yeah. Like, that's how I, how I, and I was just like, that's, that's nuts. He's, he's saying it's so weird to see you on the BPM team. And, but also I learned from you and how to become a filmmaker. And now yeah. I'm a filmmaker for BPN. And, oh, he works at BPN. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry. Okay. sorry. Yes. He's on the media okay. team. Gotcha. So there's media That's people hilarious. mixed in. <laughs> and there's this intersection there where there are multiple people on the media team. Yep. Where Steven Southall being one of them as well. He's gonna be at yeah. Boston. We met him at the music bed lake house trip. He was at the we did? he was at the arcade. We oh we did. That's right. He wasn't on the Nashville trip. Yes. But he was at CIM. He's gonna be at Boston. Yep. 
he was the first person to come up to me in real life and say, I watch your your creative channel and I watch your running channel and I love both. Yep. And that was two months before he got hired by VPN. And that was pretty shortly into you even starting your running yeah. channel. Yeah, right? that was the first series I did yeah. leading to a marathon with Carmel Marathon in the spring of 23. Yes. Yep. So, I don't know. It's a lot just, of worlds colliding. It's so weird and so awesome. Yep. And so many people in the athletic world who are making content and doing the thing really love cinematography as yep. well. And they, you know, I brought my film camera and everyone was like, whoa, mm, what is this? Sick. Okay. And I got to take film photos of everybody in the mm -hmm. gym. And when I shared those with everyone, everyone's like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. like, oh. So that's going to be a constant theme for me too. And even that got me connected to Believe in the Run, which is a huge podcast in the running world. And me just texting Thomas yesterday and us getting excited, uh, people I'm going to meet for the first time at, at Boston. He's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Cool. And they found my work because I did an Instagram reel photographing the shoes I'm wearing right now on film. That's and how they found you originally? Yeah. I think that was the first oh, okay. thing Thomas saw. Gotcha. I was like, okay. whoa. Yep. That's Because he photographs shoes all the time. Cool. But he's never seen it done on film. And yep. so, yeah, there's just all these interesting ways and this goes this harkens back to what i preached on my main channel from the beginning is the the whole concept of lean into what makes you different and like those outlying things being the things that get attention of yeah. people like within a, a certain niche you're introducing a novel concept to an industry yeah so that's what's resonated so much on youtube mm -hmm. that's what's grown the thing is because we're bringing all the cinematography skills yeah into this discipline and people are recognizing it like me, is that something that you recognized in Nick's channel when you first started watching him as well? The totally. aesthetic component of totally. it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well-crafted vlog, a story, yep. like something that made sense, yep. that visually looked great. Yep. And then as I continued to follow, the media team just kept upping them, themselves. And, and I was looking at it just going, this is this is so different. than Because yes. the stereotype in the running world specifically is that everything is just hot trash on a GoPro with blown highlights and peaked <laughs> audio. You know, that's just... Okay. That's that been, is what it is. It's been par for the course yeah. for so long. Yep. And people still love that. Yep. Because it's about running. Yeah. So I approached it looking at, okay, well, let me do the same thing. Let me make it about running. Yeah. Like actually about it, but make it look and sound great. Mm -hmm. and, and have exciting artistic elements woven in mm -hmm. very similarly to what Nick is doing. Yeah. It's just different because it's Cyrus and I right. and not a full suite of right. media team, right. you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's been incredibly exciting to build that. And I found, I have found so much fulfillment in using those skills to, to say something and do something mm -hmm. that is consistent, that is clear you know, that's what's been so hard for the creative channel. It's just, what do you talk about? What? Do you, how do you show up year after year having something to talk about? Mm -hmm. So that's what weddings were so great for me on that main channel for so long. Mm -hmm. And as I've done less and less volume of that, it's just kind of been like, what do I talk about? Now? I can't talk about running because that's my running channel. Right. I can maybe talk about it from time to time, but I'm just doing so many things that, there's no, uh, there's no consistency there. Mm -hmm. but there's no, there's no audience that's like, oh, I know what I'm gonna get if I click on this video. Whereas the running channel, people are like, I know exactly what I'm gonna get. Right. I know this is the next episode. I know this is the next thing in the progression. This yep. is the whatever the title is, what it's going to be. And YouTube is like, here's how much money I made doing this thing. Mm -hmm. Here's this short film. Mm -hmm. Here's this tutorial. Mm -hmm. And you're just kind of stabbing at the dark with the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what so many people are doing in those niches now, unless mm -hmm. they're consistently doing gear reviews, mm -hmm. consistently doing one specific thing within the niche, like Potato Jet or Geraldine Dunn, you know, yeah. uh, Sarah Dietschy mm -hmm. uh, with tech, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So Yeah. <laughs> Michael Scott? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, that's... Yeah. No, I mean, because they all have funnels of media to draw from. They all have sources. They have mm -hmm. they have a constant stream of new stuff that is coming in when you are dedicated to something yeah. like that because there's always new things being released. There's always new stuff to cover. And in that sense, a YouTube channel really feels like a channel at that point. Yeah. Like you are tuning in 
to a channel that provides this very specific type of media, yeah. which is exactly what a running channel provides as well. Yeah. So it's making me wonder, do I, do I really kind of niche back down on the main channel mm -hmm. and figure out one to two things that I want to do consistently yeah. as opposed to just kind of doing whatever, whenever? Well, that's my follow-up question. Yeah. H how are you feeling about YouTube channels right now? I mean, you don't need to speculate, but yeah. it seems to me that you are, at least in this season right now, really connecting with the running channel. Like you're, you're loving it. People are loving it. The growth is insane. The quality is insane. You and Cyrus are doing amazing things with it. It seems like that is where you at least want to put the majority of your time when it comes to things on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Because with it as well, the sponsorships associated are so different than the creative space. Mm, yeah. Because my BPN contract, they're like, here's your contract. Our expectation is like mention us in a, like at least a video a month. Yeah. And that could be an Instagram story. Right. And I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. The stakes are so much lower. It, it's in, in the creative world. It's like, here's this one time video you're getting sponsored for one video. This is the rate. These are the expectations and the laundry list of lines you need to say and right. things you need to promote and this and that. And you say this phrase and this, that, this other. And I've always tried to connect with brands that are not so much that mm -hmm. I've tried to not get into creative agencies that are signing me deals that force me into contracts and sponsor sponsored, uh, uh, uh ad reads. Mm -hmm that are so manufactured, like the ones you always see and the people are so tired of. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Music Bed for being one of those very yes. flexible brands yes. who's very supportive mm -hmm. in that sense. And and pick time. And mm -hmm. like, there's there's only a few that I've like really latched onto mm -hmm. that I'm like, okay, this, like they trust me, you mm -hmm. know? They trust what I'm doing and where I want to go with stuff. But I'm like about to do it. I'm about to sign another contract, like a, a large retainer contract with Koros as well. Oh, sick. Okay. And it's the same deal. I was going to ask actually this if there's going to be a second, because is BPN the only sponsor you have on your channel as far as like a sponsor sponsor versus an affiliate program? Uh, no, well, Koros has sponsored one off videos. One off. Like okay. the one that went yep. up today is sponsored by Koros. Gotcha. Uh, the one that's breaking down Boston will be sponsored by Koros. But also. after that, we're looking at penning a contract that's like a year long. Whoa. Okay. And, um, or something very large. Whoa. Like we still need to talk through that but we're very much aligned on it just doesn't make sense in this space to, to have so many integrations that are like this specific video is sponsored by sure. It's so much more powerful to say I'm a sponsored athlete by this brand. Yeah. It's in the description. This is how I use the thing they have for me. Yes. I mean, from, from an outsider's perspective, that seems so effective because they are investing in you as an athlete yeah. rather than you as a media person yeah. or as a figurehead for the brand. Right. An ad read wouldn't make sense for most of these brands, right. truly. They just want you to do your thing to get better mm -hmm. because when people see you improve, then that legitimizes the tools that you use. Right. And I don't know if I would have gone out and gotten the pace three and the heart rate monitor and the pod two on my foot. That's the, like the trifecta of what I've used the entire Boston marathon. I literally didn't have the heart rate monitor and the pod for four or five runs out of 90 in this block. Uh -huh. Like I committed to the system mm -hmm. and now I have all the data to talk about it. Mm, and so for okay. me, it was like, I don't want to sign a contract yet. Let me just experience the system and yeah. see if I like it. And I fell in love with it. And I'm like, great. Now the sponsorship makes a ton of sense. It was the same with BPN. I wanted to test the stuff over a month or two, mm -hmm. make sure it sat well with me. The gels worked, G1M, carb mix, like it all worked. And I fell in love with the product. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about BPN and Koros, they're, they're, they're now recognizing the power of signing people like me who aren't elite athletes, but can connect with people who are going through the same rhythms. Yeah. It's a lot harder to associate with someone who's so far up there. Yo, totally. And so they're looking at someone like me, they're like, wow, he's a dad, he has four kids, he's married, he, he's a creative, he has a full-time job, which that's kind of getting weird now because it's like running's becoming half my job. Yeah. But they're like, he's balancing these things and he's still progressing. Mm -hmm. And he's progressing in the way I see myself progressing in the way I want to I mm -hmm. progress. Mm -hmm. I want to run a 240 marathon. I want to break three in the marathon. I want to hit these landmarks. Yeah. And so there's that. 
that connectedness that people don't necessarily get with an elite athlete. Mm -hmm. And I think people are much more prone to jump into elite people's content because they're like, okay, how are they doing this? Right. How are they getting to that level? But in what I'm doing, there's so much more personality and connectedness in the um, familiarity yeah. with the audience. And these brands are starting to recognize there's so much power in that and leaning into the less of this is sponsored by hashtag ad, blah, 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 but signing contracts where it's like, let's just support your goals. Yeah. <laughs> I reached my uh, calorie goal. Thanks, Cora. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's come alongside you uh -huh. because it's not it's not that I'm just casually running. Like I'm actually pushing myself to my own limits mm -hmm. of what's possible for me at these distances, mm -hmm. especially specifically at the marathon distance. And so they're seeing that and they're saying, "Let's support that process," because they're not they're not penning a deal with an influencer that's just making a videos. It's like, this is what this piss like looks mm -hmm. like on a treadmill at this pace and this one at this pace. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like, I'm not doing the stereotypical Instagram reel type stuff. Yep. I'm training to, to meet my own limit of goals. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, to come alongside in that way and be like, here is this, this amount of money integrated the way you see naturally fit. Yeah. That's, in my opinion, it's just, so, and this is what I've been pitching to these brands. It's so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to another company, Outway. They, you, know, you give me socks, and oh yes, it's the, the same box deal. Of socks. Yes, I'm just like, I don't want to make a YouTube video. It's like this video is sponsored by socks. <laughs> it just doesn't make <laughs> sense. But I love your socks. <laughs> Let's figure out how to integrate it in a natural way, and. <laughs> The CEO is like, yeah, absolutely. Can you please, just for the meme intro, your next video, this video is sponsored by Socks. Just Socks. Just capital S, Socks. This is big Socks. They're just unbranded it's white tube Socks with socks. yellow stains on them. <laughs> that would be hysterical, actually. Socks. That's pretty funny. Big Socks. <laughs> video is sponsored by Big Trees and Big Socks. <laughs> <laughs> this video is sponsored by Shoes. Shoe. Hey, shoe, just you, you've heard of shoe. <laughs> you use shoe. We all love it. I have purse. <laughs> <laughs> I have shoe. <laughs> I have hat on head. So I mean, I guess yeah, the conversation is kind of naturally meandering. Yeah. Yes, this is what we wanted. But it it was very clear that athlete week was the uh, the solidifying. Mm -hmm component of me going yeah i absolutely belong at bpn i want to be there long term yep. as long as they want to extend a contract to me and have me be a part of the team it's something i want to be a part of amazing yeah one thing that came to mind as we talked about this and kind of prepped this episode mm. is if something like this like this athlete week for example could be translated into the creative world yeah. strictly creative world and when I thought about that, I feel like the closest analog to that that currently exists are workshops, which we kind of referenced earlier. You know, a multi-day, lots of people coming together, making friends, meeting people that you've known on the internet for a while in person. A um, lot of similar DNA between, you know, even just like workshop from New York City, for example, and something like this. It's like almost like camp kind of, mm -hmm. kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. Larger scale, more people, less intentional. I think a little bit on the workshop side, BPN much more like distilled. This is a very specific thing that we're trying to achieve with our people specifically. Yeah. But you've been in both of those camps. Mm. Did you feel any similarities between something like a photographer workshop, oh, multi-day yeah. kind of thing with the BPN Athlete Week? Absolutely. It, I mean, whenever you do something like that, there's going to be those components where yeah. it feels like camp. Mm -hmm. Where you get to the end, you're like, "Oh, we all love each other. I'm gonna so I miss you so much." Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, there was definitely that component. It felt like the difference here was people weren't co as competitive. Mm, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. It's not that the, those workshops ever felt like competitive. Yeah. 
but you always felt that component of people sizing each other up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where I was never, I never cared about that. Yeah. I never was like, I, I don't, I don't care how many followers you have. I, I don't, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares? And there, it, that just didn't exist. Yeah. On a, on this trip, like, right? No, it's the the person with the biggest following in the room was the humblest person, you know, and Nick. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, I didn't know if you and were Russ. Right. And, and Russ. Okay. Like Russ is over half a million followers on Instagram. Wow. Like from what I can tell when he goes to powerlifting meets, he like, he has to get himself away from everything or else he'll be fully mobbed. Like crazy. So, and he's just sitting there like, and he, he's a creative genius too. Okay. After he won that competition, he, he had already had newspapers printed about his championship title, and he got on either a set or a private jet with champagne and the newspaper and had a photo shoot. <laughs> and I guess that doesn't wreak humility like that. <laughs> and yet, if you actually follow I mean, the guy. I'm sure that's looked sick, though. If anyone can do it, he's allowed to do it. Yeah. And yet he is... The the one of the humblest people I've ever met. That's he's so like quiet and soft spoken and just a like, killer. That's such a cool and idea. Absolutely killer. And I caught him at the airport before we left, and he was talking about worlds. And I don't I know nothing about powerlifting. I'm like, surely you you like taper going to the event? And he's like, oh yeah, definitely. Like I'll have a you know, like a three week taper going into the actual meet. And his next line was. It's the same. It's the same as what you. It's the, all the same. Mm. And I was like, "That's really profound and really interesting." Rabbit hole, but uh, it it was so cool to meet people who are thinking that intentionally about the creative side of it mm-hmm. too, because it's just fun. Yeah, like, that's really cool. I love the idea of printing out a newspaper for <laughs> something like that. Like that's so <laughs> sick. What a what a brilliant idea. When I saw the photo, I I even was like, "Is wait, is that real? Is that you? Like, yeah. Is it, wait, whoa." But it's like totally fabricated and just as so like cool. a PR stunt. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I, oh man. So it was cool to like photograph him and other people in the gym. Yeah. And, you know, just like hand off those photos to them and be like, whoa, this yeah. is so rad. It's on film, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. To have that mutual appreciation on the artistic front too. Yeah. Very not competitive. Yes. You know? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So then, so, so workshops. You know, there's a little bit of difference between what we've experienced as photographers in the workshop world versus the athlete week then. So how, I feel like, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit off mic before with Gene about the possibility of doing a uh, get bored and make stuff retreat Mm -hmm. or something along those lines. I just want to explore and just brainstorm how we could create something similar to an athlete week, but it's a creator week or yeah. whatever it is. And it's the same level of intentionality. Sure. You know, not everyone's coming together because they're all signed on right. by a brand. There's that difference as well. Um, but I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a way to kind of create something along those lines that has a similar culture of mutual respect, mutual support. Yeah. Um, maybe there's, there's multimedia involved. It is not just all the same exact type yeah. of artist. Uh, you're trying to get people from different disciplines so that mm-hmm. you know, we can all kind of like share ideas and, yeah. and bounce things off of each other. But I just think, I don't know. I think it's an idea worth exploring. I think it could be really, as you were saying that, it could be really cool to do something like that. And the whole goal of the entire trip is like we make one piece of media collectively. Mm, that like could be cool. We make one film all together. Yeah. And there are graphic designers and there are motion people with motion graphics and yep. there's filmmakers and photographers and it's this crazy multimedia event yep. where the idea is pitched in the beginning and then throughout mm-hmm. we're all just kind of collaborating in all these crazy ways to make something and you're like okay well where does that live right if it's sponsored by something yeah maybe it goes on that channel or whatever right but like what a cool team building exercise that would be mm-hmm. and yeah could could just like lay the the framework and groundwork for like really cool team stuff. That's just one idea, but mm-hmm. I think the whole memo of the trip would just have to be like check your ego at the door. Yeah, you know, right? Like no one's above anyone else here. Mm-hmm. No one's more than anyone else here. Yep. Everyone has something they can share that could benefit 
someone else artistically, mm. emotionally, mm-hmm. uh, professionally. Yeah. However you see fit, like bring what you have to this thing and have a mentality of giving more than taking. Yes. Yeah. I think the idea of everyone working together to one common goal really helps underline exactly yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Like we are all trying to achieve this goal by the end of these four days that we're spending yeah. in wherever. Yeah. It gets everybody on the same team from yeah. the outset. I, feel like I so badly want to try some like beta test something like this with a closed loop of friends first and see what it'd be like if, you know, you, me and Gene got people from all over the country and just met up in one place yeah. for four days together and basically did like a test run of something like this. Cause I think it could be so cool. Yeah. And if we got it to a place where Chicago was just the hosting spot for it, maybe. Yeah. And we kind of made this ground zero for something like that. And we didn't have to travel as much yeah. for it. Obviously sometimes it'd be nice to kind of change scenery Go up a little bit, yeah. but you know, the idea of everyone piling into an Airbnb for, yeah. you know, a week is, is really cool. Um, but I just, ever since you talked about this back in, I think, you know, end of February, beginning of March, when you first heard about this athlete week happening in the back of my head, I've just been like thinking about like, okay, why doesn't something like this exist in the creative world? Yeah. yeah. You know, brand sponsorships aside and all that, like, why can't there be something similar to this? The only thing I can think of, and they've reached out to me is Trova Trip. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And it could be a collaborative trip that we do in partnership with them. Right. Yeah. Or it's GBMS Trova Trip yep. or something like that. Because the other idea we had in this discussion was, what if there was a, an embargo on the content that you made on the trip? Yeah. Like, you're not allowed to post about it until it's like two months removed. There's like a drop day. Yeah. Just like let yourself sit with it for a while. Yeah. Yep. Or the thing that we all make together, we only get to experience watching it mm. all together. Like it doesn't get shared. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, we're not making, to, we're not making content. Yeah. We're trying just, to make something for us. You just have to live with the fact that only we shared watching that thing or whatever media came out of it. Like we all got to indulge in it and yeah. share it and see it and experience how cool it was. But we all, you know, make a gentleman's agreement. That's like, this is it. You can't share this with anyone else. Like, yeah. This is just us. Well, yeah. That, mm, okay. Mm, that would be cool. Yeah, I, I think people are really craving real life interaction now in a post COVID era and uh-huh. like in, in an explosive internet era. Mm-hmm. People are really craving anything that exists online. They want some sort of human element to it, it feels. They want something longer form that's less polished mm-hmm. or something that like speaks to their existence, Mm -hmm. human connection within the videos you make, Mm -hmm. the content you make. And then, yeah, I think people are really hungry for in-person premieres and events in real life where they can actually meet someone face to face. And there's, there's something very special about that. The unfortunate reality is that the internetification of business has made the profit margins for people so slim on in-person things. Yeah. Unless you're selling it as this luxurious thing Mm -hmm. that so many people don't want to pay for at this point. Which I think a lot of Trevor trips in particular can feel like sometimes. You know, I was actually just talking to Gene about this yesterday. And that's not a knock on Trevor trip either. It's so like, there's a lot of expense that goes into it's going business. to exotic places. And like, it's business. Yeah. Like it's you, gotta be worth your time too. It has to be worth their time to come alongside another creator who's going to spearhead and sell tickets. Cause they're going to get a cut as well. And then there's literally just the logistics and travel and the cost of everything as well. That is not a cheap trip to go on. Most of them are really exotic and cool. Why would you want to, as the, as the creator, like, why would you want to sign up for that? If you're, you know, if it's eating up the time, the valuable time you have to make money doing something else where you're making three to four times the amount yes. as what you would make on a trip like that. Exactly. It's really someone just being like, no, I want the experience. Yes. Like this is actually kind of a pay cut for me, but I want to like experience something yes. with people and do something special. And so I was talking to Gene about this in the living room portion of Creative Club yesterday. I was like, how do we how do we thread the needle here? How do we find something that is relatively accessible but still provides a similar thing? I think part of it is simply not going to somewhere super exotic or new yeah. because 
it definitely attracts a certain like traveler crowd yeah. that just wants to see a new part of the world. Right. So maybe it's less focused on that. It's still a beautiful place wherever it is, a yeah. city, you know, mountains, whatever. But it's much more focused on intentional community mm -hmm. building. Yeah. Like a workshop with a smaller group of people. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone's there for the right reasons, which I think is a super important part of it. And we're all doing it for one collective goal. Yeah. Like maybe it is a, a, a film or some kind of project or art piece. Um, there's just, everybody's like on the same page going into that thing. And yeah. I think it would, could do something really cool for the right people. Yep. I don't know. Last question. Where do you see Floberg Runs going? in 2024 and evolving? There are plans to do a lot of the same stuff I did with my main channel as far as it's not necessarily education, but training because mm -hmm. people are asking me to coach them. Mm -hmm. And from a business standpoint and a time standpoint and how valuable my time is to me, individually training or individually coaching people is just going to be too difficult. Like, I'm already struggling so much with communication between all the channels of communication in every front in business and personal. So adding then 20 more people to that is literally impossible for me. I just can't handle that. So it's more so building out an infrastructure eventually that's going to be using all the filmmaking, editing, education skills mm -hmm. that I already have to offer something like that in the running space cool. while continuing to sign uh, sponsorship contracts that make a whole lot of sense that are non-competitive with that thing that I want to build. It's like, I have no intention of making a watch company. I have no intention of building a supplement company. I, you know, the apparel is the next thing where I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. what, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to partner with existing companies already? Yep. Or is that like, is that something I want to entertain where, I could make my own running apparel, but I look at brands that I already love and I'm like, I don't know if I necessarily want to be competitive with that mm -hmm. or go through the ringer and figuring out what it looks like to build the infrastructure of. It's a massive undertaking. It's insane. Yeah. So I more so look at like, how can I partner with what already exists yeah. and do collaborations and ways that it makes sense. Or maybe I could strike some sort of equity deal with, a company that's already on the up mm. doing something like that, mm -hmm. like making socks and wants to get into something bigger. Yeah. You know, how could I be a strategic partner yeah. in that way? A Swiss army knife, if you will. Cause the other component of these contracts is I keep telling brands like send us stuff and we'll make media assets mm -hmm. around it mm -hmm. that don't even involve my face. Like you want a short commercial or an Instagram reel or a set of film photos of this thing send it to us. We have a full studio to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's insanely compelling mm -hmm. because we're always, you know, there's a revolving door of creatives that are internal here and we can never land them, whatever, you know? And so to outsource that stuff would be insane if it's structured in the deal I already have. If yeah. the understanding is if you send me stuff and I, I send you a gallery of images that's built into my contract, like, yeah, let's do that. Pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's what gets me excited, and yeah, it's it's just using all the skills. Yeah, it because if I I feel like if I made a whole lot of content about, I don't know, I'm still trying to figure out what it looks like because I want to do a photo shoot of that sort and then make a BTS of it, and that's what goes on the main channel. I think that would make sense, you mm, know? Okay, it's like because this is just a commercial shoot. Yeah, but this is how it looks like for me. Sure, it's not traditional. Like I didn't build the portfolio and make all the connections in the commercial world to land a client like this. No, I actually did the thing. Mm -hmm. I am actually a runner mm -hmm. and I got connected to the brand that way. They signed me as an athlete, but I'm using all my creative skills to do this commercial shoot. Mm -hmm. This is how I did it. Yep. Maybe you're interested in doing something in that way in a multidisciplined way. It really isn't that different than building relationships. You know, yeah. it's existing in the space mm -hmm. And rubbing shoulders with the people who are going to get you that kind of work. Like, mm -hmm. That's ultimately what it is. Mm -hmm. It's getting the attention of those people. Maybe that attention is through content and making videos. Or that is in-person events and making those connections and getting phone numbers and jumping on calls. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. So I would love to communicate that. That 
at the end of the day, intentionality and hard work is going to land you in that place where you're doing a commercial shoot or you have something to photograph, you have something to film. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That's pretty much it. Sick. I just, I have tons of direction and no direction all at the same time. <laughs> you know, how it's, it always goes. It's how it always goes, yeah. I know one direction you're running in. Harry Styles. Mm. I, ah. Get it? It's a good reference. Boston is what I was going to say. You're uh, running the direction of Boston. Yeah, from Hopkinton. Yeah. To, yeah. To, to, yeah. Through Ashland. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to get any other. No, uh, that's fine. Brookline. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one. Newton. Mm -hmm. South Newton Falls. Mm -hmm. I know some of them. Yeah. It's a great city. Getting to know Boston through a three hour video of the entire course it's a, that I've watched it's a, oh too my. many times. <laughs> it is. A, are you going to have any just fun time to enjoy Boston while oh, you're there? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, there's only so much fun you can have leading up to a race. You yeah. can't. I don't even mean like going out and partying or anything. Just like, well, you get to go no, like, like, see the city. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, no. No, okay. Yes, I'll be around it. I'll yeah. see it. I'll, you know, we're going to. Where are you staying, actually? First night I'm staying in a hotel, and then we have a BPN Airbnb. Where, where in Boston? Uh, south of the city. I don't know what name. Okay, cool, sick. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Who else from BPN is gonna be there? Uh, Tony. Cool. Oh, great. Uh, Trey Freeman. Yeah, photographer. Great. And Stephen Southall. Awesome. And then Caitlin's running. Cool. Oh, that's gonna be so I much fun. I think that's it. That's great. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Sick. Yeah. Is Cyrus staying with you? Cyrus staying with me. Great. Yep. Yeah, we have... Oh, he's going to have time of his life. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be sick. We're renting um, e-assist bikes, so he's going to jump on at like mile 16 through 25 on the parallel road Yeah, that goes along the course, mm -hmm. all the way from the fire station at the beginning of Newton Hills all the way to mm -hmm. as far as he can get to the end before getting yelled at. And then the BAA is probably going to come after me because... Good you're, luck to him. They're like so finicky about filming yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should be fun though. I'm an outlaw. <laughs> there's a whole, there's a, a personality online. He calls just himself them. the serious runner. This, okay. And he just makes nothing but satire. Great. About running. <laughs> okay. And he has this whole bit about the BAA, which is the Boston Athletic Association. Mm -hmm. And like he'll do fake BAA meetings where okay. they like, <laughs> if they don't agree with somebody in the crew, they like Dr. Evil, send him on the chair into I the see. pit of fire. <laughs> And they put on sunglasses. Is it like and they're like, long live the BAA, long live the BAA? <laughs> Is it him playing every character? Yeah. Kind of like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. I was oh no, I forgot his name. The the only guy on TikTok that I ever watch. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, Dang our it. favorite guy, the Bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, what's his name? Um, Chad, do you remember? D Dylan? D um, D no, <sighs> I can't remember. We'll, we'll remember it later when we're not recording. Dang so it. not a convenient time. He's so funny. Yeah, when I someone plays yeah. all the characters, yeah. that's what's... It, oh, it's so funny. Oh, I love yes. it. It's the, the, that's and does like, it well. Yes, that's a genre of, of TikTok that I actually enjoy. Uh, yeah, got to be good at it, but that's awesome. Very exciting. Um, what time is your flight tomorrow? 9 a.m. Okay, we're early. We're less than 24 hours from leaving. It's stupid. Crazy. I can't believe that. That's so insane. <laughs> yeah. And it's on Monday when people are listening to this episode. Yeah. Sick. Weather's was not looking good yesterday. It's looking better today okay looks like we have a tailwind cool for the race which is huge cool because a to b so it'll be at our backs the entire time pretty nice <laughs> new england spring so predictable <laughs> <laughs> yeah sick man very excited that's gonna be very cool very crowning achievement regardless of your time just like being able to run that marathon is gonna be yeah huge so very excited for you on that front. Uh, thanks for sharing experience with Athlete Week. I think it's got, I mean, obviously like you and BPN have got a wonderful relationship and a great mm -hmm. thing going so far. And I think they're doing wonderful things with their their program and the way that they're treating their athletes mm -hmm. as well. Um, and hopefully we can kind of take some of those principles that they're employing within their niche of the creative industry and do something similar for yep. our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. You're next. Next episode. Next. Are yeah. you next? You're going to meet? Um, I think a couple uh, episodes. Re release wise, maybe not. But yeah, this is going to be the first of, I guess, kind of three episodes where we're doing like deep dives on each of our kind of solo things that we've been really doing. Mm -hmm. So this is Eric's episode on obviously running. If you didn't catch that by everything we talked about for the last hour. Um, and then I, Eric, vice versa, will interview me about design. And then I'm going to interview Gene at some point 
uh, about commercial photography, working with IHG, um, some of the hotel and yeah. luxury kind of spaces that he's been photographing and filming um, to kind of just show, open up the curtain a little bit and show people what we've been up to. So, yeah. And then got some guest episodes coming up too, which will be fun. Brock yeah. being one of them and then um, hopefully interviewing uh, Jimmy the Barista, which will be yeah. fun because he's in town for the Coffee Expo happening this weekend in Chicago. Oh, that like, is happening. It is happening, yeah. He gets in. Chris was in town delivering my race shoes to me in person yesterday. Was he here for that? For a coffee event. Oh, it, oh, so he's here this weekend? Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. he's in the coffee industry? Yeah. Or is he just attending? He's in the... Oh. Well, yeah, not as much anymore, but he used okay. to like barista for years oh sick like okay high level yeah it's like the biggest north american <laughs> coffee event yeah. that takes place i know i remember so. jimmy dming me about it yes and i was like it's it's race week it's yeah. like right before i leave so yeah. was, i think he gets in tom- oh, tomorrow yeah. tomorrow so i won't even be or maybe, maybe this evening i'm not sure but um yeah. hopefully he's gonna come by the studio tomorrow Sweet. he included us in an episode of rally caps in his newsletter apparently oh gene showed me a screenshot that jimmy texted him i was like that's so and he just started sweet. the podcast yes he did yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. which ah oh, it's gonna be so much good stuff to talk about good episodes coming up very exciting uh, and thank you all for listening watching one last reminder if you haven't already and you're in chicago and you're available on april 20th 2024 please come see our chicago screening of moving still our documentary our feature documentary um, super excited to share that evening with all of you if you enjoyed this episode please give it a like on youtube subscribe to the channel and if you're listening right now while Eric is running the Boston Marathon, uh, please leave a rating on Apple Podcasts, rate us. Spotify, all the places. Rate it. Share the episode with a friend. Share uh, it. Yeah. Do all the things, please. Bye. We're trying to... Wait. Hey, this is episode 70 also. Yay! Yeah, I, Yay. Yes, it's episode 70. So I don't know which slider does the applause. No, just don't I'm even. I'm going to accidentally stop yep. the recording. So um, yeah, awesome. We love you all. We'll see you next week. Slater. Slater. <laughs> Slater. <laughs>